What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Run Good here coming at you with yet another video and today we're not doing a rip but I'm happy to announce that I am doing a ComC 1k challenge. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time now and I decided to finally take the plunge. So basically what I'm doing all throughout the course of 2021 is I'm going to flip a whole lot of trading cards on ComC with a starting capital of $1,000 and I'm going to see how high I can run that up. You know, I've been an active seller on ComC.com for a very long time now, so it took me a little bit to prep my account in order to do this. I had to take down a lot of my previously consigned cards for sale. I had to take down basically everything. So I actually sold my portfolio at the end of the year to accomplish that. I had probably about 1,700 or so cards in my account for sale prior to the start of 2021. So I sold my portfolio. I was kind of bored with it, just a lot of crap that I was trying to flip. And uh, I'm starting all over from scratch. So the reason I want to do this is I want to test myself. I want to see how high I can take $1,000 in one specific year. So personally, I think the challenge is going to end at around seven dollars to $8,000. That's where I think I'm going to land. I would be happy with anything over $5,000. If I hit $10,000, I'm going to be very surprised. So I'm going to get into the parameters in a sec, but the reason why I chose ComC.com is... You know, I know they made a lot of mistakes in 2020. Um, I know they didn't really have a great year. You know, their competitors, StockX, StarStock, things like that really kind of crept up into their space. But I do think that the the value for ComC, the, the one thing that they do right that they haven't messed up yet is flipping on the website. It's incredibly simple. It's incredibly easy. With just a click of a button, I can buy a card and then reprice it. And maybe later on in this video, I'll show you that exact process. Um... But it's incredibly simple. I don't have to take possession of the card. You know, I know that we all do that anyways. You know, you buy cards on eBay, you get them graded. Uh, they come back nines and tens and you make your profit. So there are many ways to flip in the hobby. But I think the easiest way, and I think that the way that you can flip the cards the most right now anyways, is on ComC.com. Uh, just a kind of a click of a button. It stays in your online inventory. You don't have to take possession. You don't have to pay for shipping. There's just, there's too many advantages to not flip on ComC. So... I flip on ComC, but I wanted to I wanted to do this 1K challenge just to see how good I am at flipping. So this is ComC, and what ComC is is basically an online consignment marketplace for trading cards. The easy the easiest way to explain ComC is sellers send in their cards to ComC. ComC checks them for condition, they catalog them, they scan them, they upload them into a user's account, and that seller would then just go ahead and set all of their asking prices for the items. Um, you know, ComC is one of the biggest games in town. They have about 24 million cards for sale, a whole lot of duplicates, a whole lot of junk. Uh, they are um, partnered with Upper Deck on the EPAC platform, so you get in a lot of like two cent hockey cards and, you know, Upper Deck uh X-Files cards and things like that. Um, but ComC is one of the best games in town when it comes to flipping. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what that looks like in just a couple minutes. But if you're not familiar with ComC, here's their homepage. Hasn't changed in like 10 years. Um, so you go here, go into your dashboard. If you log into an account, this is what a dashboard looks like. I've gone ahead. My camera is obscuring some of my account statistics that I don't want to share on this video. Um, but you can kind of see... You know, here's all of my latest sales. I am recording this video on January 1st. I'm going to give it a little time before I upload it. I don't want anybody going to my account and giving me, you know, a boost or just buying cards just for the sake of giving me more money to play with. Uh, so I want to let this challenge kind of uh, play out over the first couple of weeks of 2021 before I release this video. Um, but you can already see it is January 1st and I've made three sales already, including two very, very strong flips. Um, this Timu Warner from National Treasures, this auto, I can click it, I can show you a picture of it. I found that sitting in the recently added section for $30 and I was like, whoa, that's wrong. Uh, so like I said, uh, I feel like I'm one of the best when it comes at recognizing value. I think this one was kind of a no-brainer. Also, this one was a no-brainer. I don't know if this person intended to price his card at $7.50 or $75. Um, but it was just a Mitch Marner autograph for 75 cents. That one popped up and recently added. Uh, it was only up there for about a minute. I snagged it, and sure enough, I was able to flip that for $35. Um, but then here's a good example of a card that I recognized was undervalued, and I, I made some money on it. So this is Jake Fraley, Seattle Mariners player, Jake Fraley. But it's from Topps Chrome Black, and this is a $200 box of cards that you only get four cards from. You know, even though it's not a big, not a big rookie, 
for a dollar seventy. I thought, hey, that card's probably undervalued. Let me price it at five dollars, and sure enough, within a day or two, it actually sold. Um, so sold for five bucks. Comp C takes a five percent transaction fee. I get four dollars and seventy five cents. And then here are some cards that I flipped to end twenty a twenty. Um, just again, a card you wouldn't expect a Kenny Thomas Topps Chrome Refractor. Uh, it is a PSA 10 though, you know, a no name player, but a PSA 10. I bought it for $9.99, sold it for 26 bucks at eBay auction. Uh, so they took a $3.50 fee because I did sell it on eBay, you know, through, through ComC, ComC auctions on eBay. And then here's another good example of a sale, right? Or another good example of a different way I could flip on Com C. This is Darius Garland, a very hot player. This was a premier level silver prism. I picked it up for $40 and just a quick flip got my $61.75. I had priced it at $65 and uh, it sold for $61.75. So I think this illustrates some of the some of the ways that you can flip cards on Com C. You know, you could take a player like Garland who's hot and short his card, buy it for 40, flip it for 50% profit. You can take a player like Kenny Thomas, you just recognize when a card's undervalued, you know, a PSA 10 of a no-name player, low pop PSA 10, uh, that was a quick 15 bucks. And then a card where, hey, maybe this set, this set, Topps Chrome Black, it's it's an expensive set, right? So $1.70 for uh, any rookie from that set, I'd probably buy any rookie at $1.70. And then of course you can find the steals, you know, like the Timu, or in the Mitch Marner, maybe the dude underpriced it. I don't know what the deal is, but hey, I got my money out of that, so I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to show you the cards that I've bought so far. So we're going to switch over to that screen right now. So in order to facilitate this video, I actually had to sell a lot of cards uh, towards the end of 2020. And I did so just by selling my entire ComC portfolio to one person. ComC offers this functionality in the terms of port sales. Um, so I sold my port to somebody. I got a really amazing uh, price for it, actually. Normally, when you sell a port, you get about 10 to 20% of your asking price. I actually got closer to 30%. And the majority of my portfolio at the time was largely just like $1 and $2 cards that I had consigned all throughout 2020 and 2019 and in years past, as well as some failed flips of players that were hot and then, you know, immediately got cold or just cards that were going to take forever to flip. So uh, I sold my whole Com C port. Anything that I didn't sell, I marked as not for sale. Um, so a lot of this stuff is all brand new. It's all stuff that I've been buying basically since the final week in 2020. I started, I had to do a lot of prep work on my account in order to be able to facilitate this challenge. Um, so I want to talk about some of the cards that I have bought so far. Um, just uh, talk about that and um, all of this stuff, you know, some of my holdover cards came out of the $1,000 starting capital. So actually, let's start at the bottom. So good example of this, if I scroll all the way down, this Bobby Dalback I bought over a year ago for $0.74 cents, um, back when he was just a prospect for the Boston Red Sox. Just a base card. Um, but a card like that, you know, that came out of my starting capital. I'm currently asking $3.40 on it. I also have stuff like a Brandon Allen Silver that's been in there for about a year. Uh, I like speculating. So I have this Cabin Yelly rookie penmanship that I bought for $3.50. Uh, Mie Oni Silver. And I think I have a couple pinks of him as well. Um, so this is some holdover stuff that I had in my account mark not for sale. So I've deducted all of these prices from my starting capitals. Uh, Svi Mihailuk, a guy I really, really like now playing for Detroit, hasn't had the best start to the year, um, but I'm pretty big on him. Um, I'm a sucker for 2020 Prism right now, so here's a couple cards I picked up towards the end of the year. Uh, a Josh Kelly. Unfortunately, I bought it, and then I noticed that it has this horrible printer line on it. So um, when I do these videos later in the year, uh, you might still probably see this card in my portfolio. I think I paid 7 bucks for it. It'll actually say right here, I paid $7.50 for that card. Um, but I just grabbed it, and then I noticed the printer line after the fact. I bought it just based off of a small thumbnail like that, which it looks fine like that. And then you click it open, and you just see, ugh. Um, so another one I got sucked in on was an Anthony McFarlane 99. It's a blue ice, the best parallel in Prism. I think I paid 10 bucks for that. Here's a card that I just thought was undervalued. You know, if I saw this card in a $5 box, I would buy it all day long. An Andre Iguodala numbered to 250. It's not from a great set. He is in a college uniform, but for $5, I would buy that out of a $5 bin. So I buy it for on ComC for $5. Uh, Will Stewart, I don't even know who this dude is, but for $0.74, cents, I'm going to buy a, a Bowman Purple numbered to $2.50. Um, this is a set 
uh, Panini Hoops, a neon green Jackson Hayes for $2. I believe the neon greens were exclusive to Australia. I might be wrong on that. I know the yellows are Dollar Tree, um, but these are super, super hard to find. If you actually click this set, they only have a handful of neon greens. I guess they probably have about 100 or so, but they... I mean, if you go to the base set, if you go to any other parallel, they have hundreds upon thousands of them. So this is a rarer set, and it was two bucks. I said, sure, why not? Um, Touring Prince for seventy-four cents, numbered to eight. Uh, that seems like a pretty obvious buy. I snagged that out of recently added. Um, you know, Evan Ingram, Pulsar, first off the line, seven bucks for a card numbered to eleven. I like Ingram. I don't like the Giants. Again, here's some more of that Topps Black, $0.85 cents for a Chris Bryant and for a Christian Yelich. That, those just seem obvious. I should make a couple bucks on those. Cam Reddish, uh, $25 for an auto. It was the cheapest Cam Reddish on the site, so I picked it up. I repriced it to $40. Uh, Anthony, D Anthony Davis, I think Anthony Davis stuff is criminally undervalued right now. Panini Contenders, um, just a really good set. This one's numbered to 65 I want to say. Uh, here's a big purchase. So I wanted to buy a $100 card and TLC uh, was popping off for the Nets when both Kyrie and Kevin Durant were out uh, it, for a game. And so I picked up a true RPA for a hundred bucks. I do think I'm going to be able to sell this card fairly quickly, probably the next time he pops off and has a big game. But I like the card uh, for a hundred bucks. It seemed like a good buy. Uh, I also bought a silver for 20 bucks, hopefully that'll load right here really quick. Um, I bought a Jake Luton, a Jordan Alvarez uh, for 850, nice patch right there, numbered to 27. Couple Kevin Durant's from Clearly again. I'm just big on Durant. Um, Steven Montez, this was a six dollar card. I was like, eh, I'd probably buy it out of a five dollar box if I saw it, so why not? I don't know what Steven Montez's future is in the NFL, but a four color patch auto numbered to 49 for six bucks. Yeah, I'd probably buy that. Uh, Fernando Tatis parallel. This is numbered to one ninety nine for three dollars. That made sense. Again, more AD stuff. He is in a Pelicans uniform here. And then finally, I bought this Aaron Judge out of Spectra for five dollars. So those are the cards that I've bought in so far. I'm not gonna take. So one thing that I decided I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna go all out on the first day of the challenge and just blow a thousand dollars. I think that would be silly. I always want to have money in my account to be able to pick up any good deals. Uh, so I'm going to be buying more slow and maybe that's not a good strategy because it, you'd think maybe, hey, just put all that money all in play at once, get those quick flips and start building it up. I actually think it would be bad to get stalled out and have a, have a portfolio full of assets but no funds to buy if a player gets hot or I know a set that's going to go up in value. Uh, so I actually didn't want to do that. So my strategy is to just continue to do what I do best, which is seek out undervalued cards. And one of the best ways to find undervalued cards on Com C, before I wrap this video up, I did want to show you is the recently added section. The recently added section are cards that are being added to the marketplace for sale in real time by sellers who are setting their own asking prices for cards. Sometimes those sellers have things like suggested retail pricing to go off of, or they can look and see what other people are pricing theirs at. But in cases where there are no copies of that card available or no, or no pricing data, some sellers just decide to price things blindly. They don't do their homework and look up eBay comps or have a good idea of what that card is worth. Perfectly good example of this is that Team Warner I showed you earlier that I was able to buy for $30. Um, so the recently added section is probably the best place to find undervalued cards. Of course, you can do player searches, you can do set searches. I think that this is really the bread and butter for finding undervalued cards. I'm going to show you exactly how to get here. So if you go directly from their homepage, all you have to do, very simple, see this little go, don't, don't type a player name, don't type anything into the search bar, just hit this go button. And what this go button is going to do, take a minute, bring you to the recently added section, make sure that you have your filter sort by as recently added, you're going to want 100 listings per page. And then you're going to want to be, make sure that you're on the details view because some of these other views just make absolutely no sense to me why they exist. Um, as you can see right now, a lot of just junk in here, a lot of three cent, eight cent EPAC cards, you know, 2016, 17 compendium. Those are worthless. Those are cards that we're not looking for. 
um, you get in here. Um, you want to be looking for cards that there's only one copy of on the site. I don't know who Kyle Walker is, but the fact that there's only one on the site is a good thing. You have no competition on that card. You can set the asking price for whatever you want. Uh, so you want to find cards like that of hot players. You want to find rookie cards, autographs, memorabilia, just really rare cards that don't pop up. You know, there's 31 of these Jalen Rigors on the site. You're probably not going to make money, you know, on that card unless somebody prices one at like five cents and then you can sell yours for 24 cents and make 20 cents or whatever. But you want to seek out cards that there aren't very many copies of. You want to seek out essentially unique cards or cards that are very, very liquid cards of hot players who will sell immediately. If I hit refresh, nothing has changed. I guess a few things have changed. You know, you see this Gandy Golden up here for forty or for nine dollars, numbered to forty, but it is a Leaf Auto, you know, college uniform, not a popular set. So I would recommend that you just spend a lot, a lot of time in this section of recently added, just browsing around, looking at all the newly added cards for sale. And so that's going to do it for today. I am really, really excited to start this challenge. It's going to test me in a lot of different ways. You know, in years past, whenever I just ran out of store credit on ComC, I could just add more, you know, just buy it, just buy whatever cards I want. This time I'm working with a limited capital of $1,000. So it's going to really challenge me to make good buying decisions and really know when I find a card that's undervalued. You know, in 2020, I was able to buy about $22,000 worth of cards and I was able to flip those up into $33,000 worth of store credit for a profit of about $11,000. Um, so I don't think that we're going to hit 11,000 in 2021. I'm personally expecting to end up somewhere in that seven to eight thousand dollar range like I talked about I think anything over five thousand I would be happy with ten thousand would be a huge stretch goal but I want to know what you guys think so leave a comment let me know where you're going to end up or where you think that I'm going to end up at the end of the year I'm going to be doing these videos probably every two months so I'll have a checkup in March where I talk about the cards that I've sold the cards that I bought, my thoughts on the challenge so far, uh, some successes, some failures, because I flip cards at a loss sometimes, which I guess isn't flipping at all, but I don't like to leave money just stuck in cards that I don't think are going anywhere. So I think that's one of the things that separates me from other flippers is I'm willing to take an L from time to time because I take way more wins than I do losses. Uh, that is going to do it for me today. We'll get back to trade where well, we get back to opening trading cards tomorrow. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching this video. You know, a lot more requests lately for star stock and comp C content. Um, so I'll be doing a star stock video shortly talking about some of the flipping that I do on there as well. And just the experience in general, but that's going to do it for me today. Take care, stay safe. and We'll catch you next time on down the road.